Welcome to Infectious Disease Lesson 2.5, Do Bacteria Cause Stomach Ulcers? Applying Koch's Postulates. The goals of this lesson are to convey how experiments can be used to derive causation from correlation, provide practice and experimental design, prediction, and interpretation of results, and highlight the limitations of Koch's postulates. At the end of the lesson, the students should be able to explain how the limitations of Koch's postulates affect investigations into possible infectious diseases, design an experiment to test the hypothesis that an infectious agent is the cause of a disease, and predict and interpret the experimental results relating to the hypothesis. We will achieve our goals by designing experiments, predicting results, and interpreting data in an interrupted case study about stomach ulcers. To prepare for this lesson, you'll need to review the following key scientific concepts. Proving causation requires a collection of well-designed experiments that follow Koch's postulates. Ethics, technology, and controls are important factors in experimental design and Koch's postulates are often unfulfilled, leaving the medical community a decision, accept or reject a model with substantial but not conclusive evidence. You can review this scientific content in the background reading provided for you in the teacher primer, the teacher manual, and the student workbook. The teacher primer provides in-depth knowledge about the scientific content presented in this lesson. The teacher manual, or lesson plan, provides a minute-by-minute -minute explanation of the lesson structure, and the student workbook provides additional explanation for students. Note that an annotated version is also available for teachers. Be sure to print the lesson worksheet. The key points of the do now are that stomach ulcers are painful erosions of the epithelial lining of the stomach that can result in serious complications. Another key point is to have students discuss their experimental design. There is no single correct design and the goal is to build confidence. We'll get there by reviewing the previous lesson's homework. The do now begins by reviewing the definition of an ulcer. Next, have the students use their homework worksheet to discuss how they approached the experimental design in their homework, including who they chose to include in the study, how they were treated, how they chose to observe changes in ulcers, and their control group. The process of experimental design can make some students uncomfortable. The point here is to give students time to practice and to emphasize that there is no single correct design. Next, ask students to identify which graph most closely matches their predicted results. Depending on the class, this step might need extra time, and some teachers may choose to have the students design these experiments in class rather than as homework. The key point of the discussion is that Koch's postulates can be used to guide experimental design to test the hypothesis that H. pylori causes stomach ulcers. We begin the discussion by considering what we would expect to see if stomach ulcers are caused by bacteria. As Dr. Warren found, you would expect to see an association between the disease and the bacteria. This raises the question, are the bacteria causing the ulcers or are they just bystanders? Upon closer examination, 100 ulcer patients all had H. pylori, which supports the idea that it's involved in ulcer formation or persistence. But the bacteria did not cause diseases in animal models. So the next step is to design an experiment in humans. The discussion sets the stage for the activity. The key point of the activity is that ethics, technology, and controls are important factors in experimental design. We'll get there by reviewing potential experimental designs to test the hypothesis that H. pylori causes stomach ulcers. For the H. pylori case study activity, have the students work in small groups to design an experiment to test the hypothesis that H. pylori causes stomach ulcers. In this study, the students can use antibiotics and sugar pills. Like with the homework, experimental design can be an overwhelming task for students, so don't be surprised if it takes a few minutes for students to engage in the process. If your students are stuck, have them step through the questions one at a time as a class. 
when all the groups have a design, have them report out to the class. It is important to note that students usually have a lot of questions relating to who to include in the study, how to treat them, and how to measure changes in ulcers. So be sure to review the content for this activity carefully before running the case. After the students have had a chance to share their experimental designs, show them how the doctors chose to proceed. In brief, patients with ulcers were broken into two groups. One received antibiotics and one received sugar pills. Next, have the students work in their groups to predict the results they would expect if the H. pylori caused ulcers. If there is time, have the groups draw their predictions on the board for comparison. After making predictions, have the students select the graph that resembles their prediction. The next few slides summarize Dr. Marshall's results, which support the idea that ulcers are caused by H. pylori but still fail to complete Koch's last two postulates, causation and re-isolation. In an attempt to overcome this limitation, Dr. Marshall did the unthinkable. He drank a culture of H. pylori. He did develop symptoms of gastritis, but he did not develop ulcers. The key points of the lesson's wrap-up are that Koch's postulates are often difficult or impossible to fulfill. This leaves the medical community with a decision, accept or reject a model with substantial but not conclusive evidence. We'll get there by reflecting on the results of the case study, emphasizing the limitations of making conclusions when it's not possible to prove causation by fulfilling all of Koch's postulates. Students often think that inconclusive data are bad data. Scientific data is rarely conclusive and often creates more questions than answers. Related to this, we make decisions based on the best data of the time, and future data may support or alter these decisions. Students will use the scientific practices covered in this lesson throughout the module to design, interpret, and evaluate data. Don't forget if you have any questions, concerns, or feedback to let us know. You can contact any of the CTSE team members and we'll be happy to help you.